Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you. We give you praise. We magnify your name. We thank you for this time that we want to share your word. Father, we ask that Holy Spirit of the living God will guide us, will direct us, and all will be well in Jesus' name. Anoint my clay, O Lord, for this time. Let me not speak of myself, but let me speak of you. To the, to the glory of God the Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me start by welcoming both our members online and our members that are in the hall. I want to say happy Easter to you all. May the Lord of Easter bless every one of us in Jesus' name. We will not go home the same way we came, in the mighty name of Jesus. The topic I'll be sharing with us today is enjoying the peace of God. Enjoying the peace of God. Let me start by thanking the apostle over this parish for this honorous privilege and honor to bring to us Easter message. There cannot be a better time than the month of Easter for a people to have, the, to have peace as the theme of the month. It is very apt and fitting. I want to appreciate our pastor for this opportunity because even when you called me yesterday, I, I, I was so surprised. I was marveled as the, as your, uh, to your level of humility that what am I going to bring? What word am I going to bring that you cannot bring? I want to tell us that humility brings promotion. And I want to prophesy upon your life, sir, if I'm permitted, that yours will be double promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever your mates are counting, you stand out. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible passage we are going to examine can be found in the book of John 14, verse 27. And I'm going to tie that with Luke 24, 1 to 6. John 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. What this is telling us is this. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Do not allow any agitation. Don't be troubled at all. No shaking, no fear, no fretting, no intimidation. intimidation. Nothing shall unsettle you. Luke 20, 24. Let's look at Luke 24, verses 1 to 6. Luke 24. Verses 1 to 6. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? It's not here, but it's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when it was yet in Galilee. I want to prophesy to the life of somebody under the influence of my voice. By the power that rolled away the stone shall have expression in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's risen. Imagine if Jesus Christ did not resurrect. What would have been our fate today? Easter depicts the very foundation of Christianity. Hence, the message of Easter is a total message of salvation from sin, from reproach, from shame, 
and peace in every sphere of our lives, be it social, emotional, physical, spiritual, health, financial, mental well-being, or psychological. Before I go further, what is peace? Let me take a cue from the preaching of our pastor last week. He defined peace as mental balance. A case of where you are not worried. A case of where you don't fret. Freedom from disturbance. A situation of tranquility. A case of nothing broken, nothing missing. Now you might want to ask me, Pastor, what is the guarantee that Jesus has given us his peace? What is the guarantee? That's a guarantee in the, in, in the Bible. Isaiah 53, 4 to 5. The guarantee of our peace is there. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him striking, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripe, we are healed. This is telling us that the chastisement for our lies, chastisement for adultery, chastisement for fornication, backbiting, evil communication, gossip, dishonesty. He took our place and got punished for all of them. And so, they cannot undo the punishment. So we are free from that punishment, and there is nothing that will disturb our peace. Praise the Lord. The chastisement needed to obtain peace was laid upon him. It was keen for our iniquity. It was smacked. For, 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 for our sin. I prophesy unto somebody, you shall experience peace in your marriage, in your career, in your ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities and guilt. The transgression that separated us from the commonwealth of Israel has been atoned for, and we are reconciled back to God. Relationship restored to the fullness of God. Reproach and shame gone. It was made a cause. So that the cause of toil and lack and struggle will be removed in our lives. Colossians, I mean Galatians 3.13 enable us to know that we've been brought, we've been brought back. We've been reconciled back to God. Illnesses and diseases taken care of by the stripes he received on the cross of Calvary. They, they cannot undo the, the stripes. And so our healing is guaranteed. Praise God. Now, the next thing we want to look at now is things that will disturb our peace or things that will disturb the peace of God to reign in our lives. Number one, sin and iniquity. The Bible records in Proverbs 14.34, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, it's our sin that is separating us from God. His hand is not too short. No, his head deaf for, for him not to hear us. But our iniquity has separated us. If he has taken our sin, he's been dealt, our sins have been dealt with, why are you going back to that sin? It's like you are disturbing what will guarantee your peace. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 17 says, He himself took our infirmity, meaning that he has taken our disease. So that disease is not there. Whatever you are feeling right now is peripheral. It's temporary. Praise the Lord. Number one is sin and iniquity. Number two, disobedience. I gave the example of, I want to give the example of King Saul in 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23, where God told him, that to acting is better than sacrifice and to obey than the fact of ram. Let's read it. 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. Don't forget we are sharing, enjoying 
the peace of God in our lives. It is given already, but how do we enjoy it? 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23 says, And Samuel said, At the Lord a great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to, be, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to akin than fat of ram. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word, of, the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Because of the disobedience of King Saul, instead of peace to reign, there was problem, there was conflict. If you not follow the precept of God concerning every department of our life, there will be problem. Say, for instance, if you decide to marry a midget, you'll be surprised. It will demand respect. So don't marry somebody you cannot respect. Because if you marry him and you not start praying, you, you don't respect him, you start praying. You have to respect him because the, that's what the word of the Lord says in Ephesians 5, 22 and 23. Number three, pursuing an alternative B. Remember God's promise to Abraham in Genesis 15 and the carnal plan for children in Genesis 16. The peace in that home became disturbed because God said he's going to bless them with his own son from, I mean, Abraham and Sarah. But because of their impatience, Sarah introduced another alternative, which I call alternative B. So if God promised something, it is not our job to help him to achieve it. God will fulfill, fulfill it himself, wait for the Lord. He is not a liar and he's never late. He will do, he makes all things happen in his time. The next thing that disturbs our peace is fear and unbelief. If you fail to take necessary step because of fear, and unbelief, peace in some departments of our lives will be disturbed. Sometimes we think it is too, too, it is too good to be true. If they say, make sure you do your tithe and offering, you might be saying, you'll be less for it. You might be saying, it is too good to be true. But if you obey, God will come, God, God will do this in some part of the, of the, of the deal. The fear there is you might be thinking, ah, my salary, even all my salary, it's not enough for, for me to pay my bills. If I pay my tithe now, I pay offering, there won't be a lot of money left. Don't think like that. That's fear and unbelief. If you believe what God says concerning it, you will not fear. Do as God wants you to do. Then you have peace in that department of your life. Now, recipe to enter the peace of God. Recipe to rent, enter the peace of God. Number one, be born again. John 3, 1 to 5. To be eligible to the peace of God, you need to be born again. The food that is not meant, that is meant for the children, are not to be given to slaves. So if you are not for God, if you are not with the Prince of Peace, you will not expect to enjoy the peace that he promised us. So you need to be born again. You need to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And so all that pertains to Christ will become yours as of right. Number two, study and doing the word of God. It is not just important to study. It is important to do that which you study. Because studying and not doing what the Bible says, you will not get what the Bible says you will get. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 
what this is telling us is, it's not only reading it, the book, the, the book, the, the word of God, is for us to do as it says, so that we can have peace in that department of our lives. If we just read, it's just read for knowledge's sake, that peace might elude us. But when we read and we observe to do what is written there, there shall be peace in our finances, there shall be peace in other departments of our lives. Psalm 1, 1 to 3 also say something like that. Psalm, Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What this one is telling us is this that we should take the light in the word of God, meditate in it day and night, make it your guiding principle, your working principle, so that in every department of your life, you succeed, you do well, you be fruitful, you not lack, and you prosper in all that you lay your hands on. When you prosper, you will not be fidgety. When you prosper, there will not be agitation of what am I going to do? What am I going to use? What am I going to, where, where am I going to get money to pay this? Where am I going to get money to pay that? Observe what God said to do, and you shall have peace all around. There are no shortcuts. If you want shortcut, you are inviting problem. If you want shortcut, you are inviting chaos. If you want shortcut, you are inviting Big, big, big problem. Amen. The next one, the next divine recipe to enter into the peace of God is having unshakable faith in God. Faith that does not waver. Knowing that if he says he will do it, he will do it. Because he has all it takes to make sure that what he says come to pass. There was an account in the book of Daniel it does, not, it does not stop to amaze me. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, 13 to 25. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto, unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dusima, and all kind of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and will deliver us and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O God, O King. But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I will jump. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. And in verse 25, he answered and said, 
That is the king. Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. What an account. For somebody to believe what is not physically possible, for somebody to believe what seems unworkable, how can you say you trust the God that you serve and you are allowed to be thrown into the fiery furnace? Would that God follow you there? You must have a faith that is unwavering, a faith that is unshakable. And when you have it, you have peace that transcends all understanding. Because there's, no, there's nobody that will understand this. You believe what is not physical. It's not physically possible. You, you'll be thrown into a, a fire and you believe there will be God there that will rescue you. You believe what looks as if it is not possible, it is not workable, and you believe that God will work it out. If you dare to believe, you, you dare to see the hand of God. How can you trust God? How can you trust that God will meet you in a fiery furnace? He said, Isaiah 41 10. Isaiah 41 10 says, So I will be with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It came forth for them. It did not leave them. It did not, it did not let people ask that. Where's your God? Hallelujah. Having unshakable faith in God. If he says he will do it, he will do it. If he says do it this way, please do it that way so that you can enjoy peace in that department of your life. The next recipe is listen and depend on the Holy Spirit. Don't do anything of your own. Per issue, per time, per occasion, listen to the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you. In the book of John 5.30, Jesus himself said, John 5.30. I can do nothing by myself. I judge as I hear. Meaning that it's not the, it, 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 it will not tell you what you will not give you peace because it's not an author of confusion. Whatever it tells you shall bring peace to your life and shall bring peace to all the departments of your life. So if you want to do anything, listen to him. Don't do it your own way. Do it God's way and see him show up for you so that you enjoy the peace of God in every area of your life. The next one is appropriate the work and believe the potency of the work on the cross of Calvary. It is one thing that Jesus Christ has done the job for us. It's another thing to appropriate the work that has been done to your own life. It's another thing again to believe in the power, in the potency of the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. You have to appropriate that healing is mine, it's been paid for, shame is not mine, lack is not mine, it's been paid for. Instead of lack, begin to say that I will lend unto nation. Instead of heal health, you have sound mind. Instead of lack, you have ceaseless provision. Instead of chaotic marriage, the one in your home will be renewed at all times. Your home becomes heaven on earth if you listen to the prescription given in the Bible. Number five, look up unto Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Hand over everything to God. Don't let anything cause you, give you worry, no anxiety, no fretting. Just give it to him. He's the one that can do it. 
There's nothing that baffles him. There's nothing that is bigger than him. Just hand it over to him. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will come upon you. But if you are thinking of the way you're going to sort it out, you want to use your human mind, you want to use logic, you find that you'll be getting from fire to frying pan, from frying pan to, to fire. But rather, instead of wasting your time, look up unto Jesus. Do you know most of us Christians, what we do is we give us ourselves undue work to do. Because why don't you just leave it to him? He's able to do it. Why don't you just leave it to Jesus? Jesus, uh, this is my marriage that is having problem. Father, I give it to you. This is my brother, my, my sibling that is not liking me, that is, not, that is just doing all these sort of things. Father, I just hand it over. This is my work that I've not been, they don't promote me. Don't look for back door. Don't look for another way. Just fix your look upon him. He said, there's nobody that looks on him that is ashamed. And when we look on him, we will not be ashamed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number six, pray ceaselessly. Pray ceaselessly. There are issues that happen that are not even from us. You have to pray against the devices of the enemy. Some is from us, some they are not for, uh, uh, from us. Let's look at the book of the book of Acts of Apostle, chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. In the midst of something that seems impossible, they were still praying. Because they know if God says he will do it, he will do it. Now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased, the Jew, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternion of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the, to the, to the people. Peter therefore kept, was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod who have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself, bind on thy sandal. And, he, he, and so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought it was a vision. He saw a vision. But when they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate, that led them unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And Peter was come to himself and said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. <laughs> Even to normal mind, Peter was sentenced to death. There's no way he can get out. He was kept in the prison, chained with two guards. Apart from that, a guard again on the door. For him, no, for him there is no escape. The case is so hopeless that you will never, to ordinary mind, you will not know that Peter will come out. But what did, what did God command us? He said we should pray ceaselessly. And prayer was just said, about him. And he even slept soundly. Somebody that is supposed to die the next day. Slept soundly. That means he was enjoying some peace. There's no way you will sleep in that circumstance. He slept in the midst of two soldiers bound with two chains and knowing fully well that the door was being manned by security, heavily guarded security officer. <laughs> I want to prophesy to somebody under the, under the sound of my voice. Peace that transcends understanding 
shall open the door that has been locked concerning your marriage, your ministry, your career, your business, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to add this to it. That even when we pray in understanding, we should also pray in tongues so that we should be using double barrels. Because sometimes we don't know what to pray about. But when we pray in tongues, things that we need to pray about, the Holy Spirit will groan on our behalf. And the, the God the Father will answer the prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're under the influence of my voice and you are saying, Pastor, how do I enjoy this peace like a river? I want to tell you, viewers online, you need to come to Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 says, come unto me, all you are weary and are heavy laden. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. If you want to take that decision right now, and you want to enjoy peace that flows like a river, you want to enjoy peace in every department of your life, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, Come to my life. Forgive all my sins. From today, be my Lord and my Savior. I yield to you. I make you my Lord and my Savior. If you have said that prayer genuinely, I want to congratulate you that you have been accepted into the beloved. You are now a born again child of God. Please get in contact with us. Phone us. Share your testimony with us so that we can rejoice together. I want to wish all of us Happy Easter. God bless you. Offering time. Blessing time. Shall we package something good to give to our God? For those in the hall, envelope, the ushers will give you envelope. Please fill, it, fill them in appropriately. Give something nice to him and see him reward you abundantly. The Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet still gathereth. That's the mystery of God. Today, if you want to scatter to give unto God, that same God will gather for you. You will not lack in any good thing. He will give you sufficiency in everything. In your health, in everything you lay your hands on, you will never lack, you will never struggle in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us invite the choir to give us a song as we lay down our offering. If you want to pay on online, the, the account details is displayed. Please follow the instruction and give something bountiful unto our God. God bless you as, as you do so.